I've been receiving lots of comments from you asking what are the pros and cons of living in Australia? Should I move to Australia or not? You're always saying positive things about Australia. Is there anything that you don't like? There are so many questions and I know that you have to make an informed decision. Probably you're at home trying to decide whether to move to Australia or not, whether this is the country for you. Now, before I get into it, of course, I need to clarify that this is my subjective experience of what it is like to live in Australia. I've been living here for more than eight years, but of course, my situation will be very, very different to yours. My experience is subjective. Why? Because we all have different realities. We were brought up in different countries, different cultures. At the end of the day, everything depends on the person. So that's my disclaimer for today. Now, having said that, let's get started. Okay, let's start with the nice things, the things that I like about Australia and that I think that are pros of living in this country and moving here. The first one, of course, is the quality of living. As you may know, Australia has a very high standard of living, and one of the reasons for this is accessible healthcare, education, and employment. In terms of healthcare, I'm not going to get into details in this video, I already have a dedicated video about it, but as a quick overview, if you are an Australian citizen or a permanent resident, or if you have a special humanitarian visa, or if you come from a country that has reciprocal agreements with Australia, you are eligible to access Medicare. Medicare is basically public health insurance. So if you have Medicare, you can access rebates, you can access bulk billed consultations, stays at public hospitals, etc. And you have peace of mind that you can always access good healthcare. Of course, if you need a special treatment, then accessing private health insurance is a good idea. So one of the pros for me of living in Australia is a high standard of living because healthcare is very accessible. Another thing that adds to the quality of living is safety. As I said in other videos in comparison to other countries, Australia is in general a very safe society. I've been to other parts of the world and of course if you read the stats, Australia has very low crime rates. Of course there is petty crime and things do happen, but in general Australia is super super safe. So for me that's a huge huge pro. Another positive of living in Australia is the fact that it has a very strong economy. I think the current unemployment rate is 3.7%. In general Australians have very high salaries in comparison to other countries and not only for professional jobs but also for trade jobs with average weekly earnings for full-time workers being around $1,800. So overall Australia is a pretty stable country both economically and politically speaking. Australia is a very productive country which gives a lot of stability and certainty. Australia also has very high quality education with most Australian universities ranking in the top 100 globally. And an interesting fact is that in 2023 the Australian higher education system ranked as the third best higher education system in the world. And again based on my experience having done my bachelor and my master's here as well as the certificate for, I do think that the quality of education here is really good. So again, for me, that's a pro. Another positive thing about living in Australia and about moving here is the fact that you're going to be able to access amazing scenery, beautiful landscapes. It's a beautiful country with a super diverse landscape from beaches to mountains to deserts. You're going to find all kinds of outdoor activities here, especially if you like beach lifestyle. Again, for me, that's a huge positive and actually one of the main reasons why I decided to move to Australia eight years ago. And another positive thing about living in Australia, and this is something that I've been saying in all my videos, so we are probably very tired of hearing this, is the fact that I do think that Australians in general are very friendly people. They are always willing to help. Australians tend to be super polite. Of course, there are exceptions, but in general, it's a very polite society. We do care about the other. If you bump someone on the street, you say sorry. The so people say thank you, please, sorry. Many of you might be thinking that's common sense, but it is not common sense. That doesn't happen in many societies, unfortunately. So yeah, that's something that I love about here. And another positive thing that I love about this country is the fact that it's super, super multicultural. Australia is one of the main destinations for migrants, and that's why you're going to find lots of people from all over the world. So it's super, super interesting when you meet someone from a completely different culture to yours and you get to try different cuisines, different food. For example, before coming here, I had never tried Indian food or Vietnamese food or Thai food, believe it or not. So it really opened my mind and today I'm a big fan of all those meals. So yes, I think that those are the main positives. Now, having said that, let's start talking about the cons. And again, please remember that this is my subjective 
with view, experience, opinions and the things that I like you might hate and the things that you hate are my love. So we are all very different where human beings are experience of how we perceive the world is going to be completely different. So yeah, let's start talking about that. The first thing is making friends. So when I first came to Australia during my first year, the first culture shock that I had was that making friends with locals took a very long time and I wasn't really mentally prepared for that. I've already talked about this in other videos and I talk about this because I do think it's important if you're a migrant to be aware of this. I feel that it's information that I would have liked to have before migrating here and even during my first year because I really really struggled to the point where once I came back home after university and I was just crying and crying and I wanted to go back to my country. So the situation was that I'm Hispanic from Hispanic background. I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina and when it comes to socializing we really really value friendship, family, we meet up every weekend with friends or every week at university you meet a lot of people, you make friends. If you are a migrant in Argentina, you're not going, or even a tourist, you're not going to leave the country without having been invited to an asado, which is our barbecue. And for some reason, I was expecting, of course, because I hadn't experienced something different, I was expecting the situation in Australia to be the same. So when I first came here, I was 21, 22 years old. I go to university and the first thing that I noticed is that orientation week is only with international students, yeah? So we don't get to meet local students. They have a separate orientation week. I do understand some of the reasons why they do this but in my personal opinion this is not the best approach. I loved my experience and again I do think that the quality of education is really good and I learned a lot but in terms of how orientation week and the activities available for international students and local students to mix if you want to make friends are very very limited. At least that was my experience it might be different now. Something that I encounter is that I would go to class and then at the end of the class I wanted to keep chatting, maybe we were put into different groups and I wanted to keep chatting and getting to know my classmates, but they would just stand up and say bye, see ya and off they went. And it was very hard. At the beginning I thought, oh, okay, maybe it's just they're in a rush and then as time went by I realized that that was the norm, yeah? People don't stay there for a chat. At least, again, that was my circumstance, my situation. But talking to other international students, because of course the first year I only made friends with international students. As time went by, we all started opening up and we did uh, realize that it was very hard to make friends with locals. I think that that was the first negative experience that I had. But the fact that so many other international students were experiencing the same thing was very striking, right? And that's something that I would have loved to know beforehand. That wasn't going to influence my decision whether I came to Australia or not, but it would have been good to know because otherwise I would have adjusted my approach to making friends. Perhaps I would have been a bit more proactive or tried to get out a bit of my comfort zone to really, really encourage and motivate those relationships. And then I did a bit of research and I found that there are some journal articles that talk about the challenges of international students making friends with locals. The reasons for this is that first, we're adults and making friends as adults, of course, it's a bit harder than when you are kids, right? When you're a kid, it's very easy to go to someone and say, hey, do you want to be my friend? At least that was my case. In other instances, we're super busy, so we don't really have the time to nurture those relationships. But in most cases, the challenge is with making local friends is that Australians, they're in their country, they were raised here, and they already have established social circle. So they're not really active when it comes to looking for those friendships. But this has been the reality. And then, of course, as time went by, I started working here in a professional job, meaning I was in an office eight hours a day, and that's when I started making my first Australian friends. But up to that point, all my friends were internationals. And then in the office, of course, when you spend so much time with someone, sitting next to someone, and you have team building activities, etc., you can basically develop those friendships. And I became really, really good friends 
with meniosis and yet that was the case but of course it took a long time and of course I had international friends but many of them were students right so they would come to Australia to study and then they would go back to their country although as well there were many backpackers from my same country but again they would all go back uh, home and at the end of the day you end up without a social network. I do have friends who've migrated to other countries and some of them have experienced the same thing. The situation might not be unique to Australia but in general if you migrate to another country as an adult building a strong social network might take a bit more time and I do think that it's one of the greatest challenges that we migrants uh, face. Loneliness, feeling that you don't belong to a place until you really build those connections and those networks. But I'm going to say this, I'm very grateful that I got the opportunity to work in an office and to get to experience what it was like to work with Australians and meet locals because that I think was the main opportunity that I had to really get to know the Australian culture. So that's something that I would really love uh, Australian universities to perhaps taint the approach again. I'm not sure if uh, today they are still doing the orientation week separate, international students on one side and um, local students on the other, but it'd be something to, I think, to reconsider. So I'm very grateful that today I have very good Aussie friends to the point where I spent two or three Christmas at my friend's house with her family. I met everyone. They were super, super welcoming. So yeah, it takes a bit longer to get to know each other and to, and to really develop that friendship. Again, it could be because of cultural reasons. It could be because we're adults and we're busier or it could be because it is true locals already have their friendships but whatever the circumstance is for you i highly recommend being proactive and go to meetup groups and join sports clubs or university clubs join a cycling group or a gardening club whatever chance you have to socialize do it because it's going to be very very important for your mental health and if you're a migrant mother remember that you can talk to your local council to join a mother's group this is especially important because many migrant women come to australia they have uh, they give birth here and they don't have family to help them this is not always the case of course but in some instances um, that's the reality so mother groups at least based on my friends who've had kids um, have been super super helpful and yeah i guess that's the reality of migrating to another country. It's not for everyone, it depends on what you want to do and what you want to get out of um, that experience. The migration process is a bumpy process, highs and lows, yeah, it's a normal process. And of course in relation to this, feeling homesick, missing family and friends, it's something, so I went back to Argentina two months ago and suddenly seeing my parents, um, they're getting old and you're like, oh, yeah, that, I, I think that's um, the hard reality as well of um, moving to another country uh, and that's not unique to Australia but it's in general so that's not about Australia and then another con I feel very very negative <laughs> talking about the negatives of living here uh, it's not my cup of tea um, but let's continue and another thing that I wasn't a very big fan of is like the major cities here in Australia the cities are basically concentrated in one spot and then you have suburbs and suburbs tend to be um, more like it's just big houses inner city suburbs for example here in Melbourne you have South Yarra, Fitzroy these suburbs basically they do have a bit more life to it but if you go out a bit further from the city then it's pure suburbia and it, it can feel a bit isolating sometimes again this is my personal experience because I grew up in Buenos Aires it's a huge city we all we I grew up in an apartment so for me I would go um, downstairs talk to my neighbors walk around the city there are cafes and lots of people walking around like it's it's crazy whereas here you go out the street and perhaps you are the only person on the street in the suburbs right and for me that was a bit um, shocking I guess especially now that I live in a neighborhood that it's further from the city it takes a bit of time to adjust but yeah I have many friends who live in the suburbs who live in big houses and they love it there especially for uh, raising kids it's an amazing choice for them they have a lot of space a garden so yes in terms of living in the suburbs it's not something that I love I'm a person that really really loves um, seeing people when I go outside and this is not something that I have been able to experience a lot living in suburbia so if you like that kind of lifestyle then that could be a pro for you again everything is very subjective <laughs> 
And for example, something that I don't like is driving. So if you live in the suburbs, you do need a car and I rather take public transport or cycle, but Australia is not super bike friendly. Again, lots of big highways because of course they all lead to the suburbs. Cycling infrastructure is rather lacking. And for me, that's another negative if you want. It's hard to get around if you don't live in inner city suburbs. That's why as well, living in those areas is so expensive. All the cons, all the negatives are interrelated but for example my partner he's Australian he grew up in the suburbs in Sydney and he loves it he doesn't mind living in the suburbs because that's what uh, he's used to that yeah whereas myself I'm used to another kind of lifestyle and that's why for me this is a con another thing that I haven't mentioned so far is cost of living well my view is that if you have a stable job here in Australia you're going to be able to cover basic costs and you have a lot of saving capacity it is true that some specific services can be very very pricey for example access Accessing healthcare extras such as going to the dentist or special treatments can be very very expensive especially if you don't have access to private health insurance. A cleaning at a dentist for example will cost you more than 200 Australian dollars or even accessing services such as the hairdresser. It can be very very pricey especially if you have long hair. A trim may cost you around 150 Australian dollars. For me, this is a huge con of living in Australia. It's not something that I like and I wish it was much more accessible. And then another question that I've been having is about the weather because, and I've seen videos as well where people talk about the weather as something that's negative. For me, the weather is fine. I live in Melbourne. The weather is crazy here, but I don't mind it. Of course, now it's winter and it's a bit like, it's pretty cold. But again, for me, it's nothing out of this world. Of course, if you go to the north of Australia, like Darwin, the Northern Territory, it gets hotter and hotter. Of course, there have been bushfires and flooding and extreme weather events. But again, this is happening all over the world due to climate change. So it's not something that's unique to Australia, unfortunately. So the weather for me, it's not a negative. And another thing is the wildlife. Wildlife, dangerous animals. I, to be honest, I live in the city. I haven't, I re you really need to get out of your way or go to very rural areas or national parks to see wildlife. You do have small spiders here and there, but they're not, it's not that there are snakes coming out of the toilet as many people think, or it's not that you're in the city and you're going to bump into a kangaroo. Perhaps this happens again in more rural towns, but not necessarily um, in major cities. Yeah, at least that hasn't been my experience in eight years. And then what other dangerous wildlife? There are dingoes in Fraser Island. You do need to be very, very careful if you go to Fraser Island in Queensland. And then sharks. Shark attacks are rare, but they are becoming more and more frequent. So that's something to be mindful of, especially if you love swimming in the ocean or surfing. But yeah, it's very rare. And to summarize, if you ask me, was it worth moving to Australia? My answer is yes. There is a reason why most of my videos are positive about Australia and why I'm so excited to share my migration journey with you and what is it like to live here and work here because uh, I love this country. This is my home. I've been living here for eight years and a half now. I'm a citizen. Australia has given me everything. I basically spent my whole adulthood here. This is a country that gave me education, employment, so I'm extremely, extremely grateful. I do think that migrating and moving to another country, whether it is for a while or permanently, changes you. It does change you, it's going to change your perspective and it, it is a good experience to have if you do have the opportunity to do so. Again, there are pros and cons, no country is perfect and the experiences that I had, that doesn't mean that it will happen to you. And I would love to hear your comments, what do you feel about this? Let's debate and if you're a migrant as well, let me know about your experience. And for similar videos, check out these ones here and here and I'll see you next time. Bye.